You're about to find out in this next game. We're hosting a party, and we brought these people in to take part in a social experiment. What they don't know is we're about to test them for any psychopathic traits that they may reveal. This simple test has been scientifically determined to uncover psychopathic tendencies. If you were at this party, could you spot the psychopaths? What if the psychopath was you? Stick around and take the test for yourself. These people think they're here for a party, but we're really here to see where they fall on the compassionate versus psychopathic scale. Want to know where you fall? Listen to the following six statements while we ask our volunteers. Keep track of how many of the statements you agree with. Ready? Success is based on survival of the fittest. Do you agree or disagree with that statement? Agree. Disagree. When I get frustrated, I release my anger by blowing up. Agree or disagree? Agree. Disagree. disagree. Love is overrated. What do you think? Agree. agree. Disagree. For me, what's right is whatever I can get away with. Be honest. I agree. I agree. Disagree. I disagree. I admire a really clever scam. Even just a little bit? Agree. I agree. Disagree. I tell people what they want to hear so that they'll do what I want them to. Agree or disagree? Agree. Disagree. So, how many questions did you agree with and how many did you disagree with? Want to know what your answers say about you? If you agreed to one or two questions, you're like half of our volunteers and you show high levels of compassion. But if you said you agree to three or four questions, you're like a third of our volunteers and are on the borderline of showing psychopathic tendencies. Now, if you said agree five or more times, well, like two of our volunteers, you're more inclined to harbor some psychopathic tendencies. <laughs> I can believe it. I think I have to be a lot more careful about how I act in public. But don't worry. Even if you agreed all six times, it doesn't mean you're secretly a dangerous maniac. While everyone displays some of these tendencies, only a select few can be called true psychopaths. Oh, Nick, say it with me, buddy. <laughs> I guess I do have psychopathic tendencies. Date me. <laughs> Psychopathic brains view the world very differently from the rest of us and have significantly decreased activity in areas associated with compassionate behavior. These questions also reveal something fascinating, which is, when tested, the majority of the population shows some aspects of behaviors also seen in psychopaths, like superficial charm, impulsiveness, need for stimulation, lack of guilt or remorse, and of course, lack of empathy. So if none of us are perfectly compassionate, it raises an interesting question. Is all compassion created equal? Even if you don't have psychopathic tendencies, would you help some people more than others? Imagine one of these two people needs your help. Who would you be more likely to offer assistance to? Option A, a nice young woman. Or option B, Skull, your friendly neighborhood biker. We know you most likely chose the nice young lady over Skull, and why wouldn't you? Skull is pretty intimidating. But let's play again with a minor change to your choices. Same deal as before. Now who would you help? Option A, E.T., or option B, the biker. We know this is a ridiculous choice, but we're doing this to make a point. When faced with a creature,